29 sucks because 29 is the end of fun without being judged for it. At 29, you and your fun friends stop partying and start having addictions. That's what they call it. <laughs> Can't get drunk on a Monday without raising some eyebrows. <laughs> bullshit. I don't know, I'm not really like an aggressive guy when it comes to like meeting women. You know what it is? I recently realized that I have a very medium sex drive. And that's okay. <laughs> Do you know how awkward it got here when I said that? <laughs> Every guy's like, I wanna bang all the time. I don't know what this giant eunuch's talking about. <laughs> Someone better get this sackless wonder off stage. <laughs> Just saying our culture is super sexed up. Everything's about sex. Like every commercial is like, you're an American man. You should want to have sex. You're like, all right. I'm trying to watch football right now. It's the Lord's Day. <laughs> you're a dude, got a dick, want to bang? Like, what? I like to nap, too. Why can't you advertise like that? Drink a Budweiser, take a nap. Done. Done. <laughs> it is fun going to bars and watching those alpha male douchebags hit on girls. Just walk up with their tight Ed Hardy shirts on, just <laughs> 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 oh, I'm so full of <laughs> 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 That's why I'm all veiny, it's the <laughs> trying to escape. <laughs> it's silly, it's silly. They say silly shit. He's like, hey, babe, come home with me. I'll bang you all night. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> First off, who's got that kind of upper body strength? <laughs> if you say a sentence like that, you're committing yourself to a five-hour locked push-up. <laughs> <laughs> if I tried doing that by minute three, my arm would be doing that goofy, out of shape jiggle. <laughs> Just like, yeah. You hold it. You, you hold it. You bang me. You gotta bang me now. Your, your turn. All I'm saying is, if you come home with me, the night might start with sex. Maybe. It's definitely gonna end in deep, deep sleep. That's how I hit on women. I'm like, you wanna sleep in, girl? Sleep in all day. <laughs> Wake up, smoke a bowl, go back to bed. <laughs> I am lazy. I just hung out with my grandma for a week. A week with an 88-year-old lady. <sighs> you run out of topics to talk about quickly. <laughs> just sitting there staring at her like, well, uh... Dude, 88... Crossword puzzles every day. She drives, that's super dangerous. Uh, we play gin rummy all the time. Oh, uh, she talks about death with an ease that rattles my bones. <laughs> Holy shit, it's creepy. It's like gang members and my Nana talk about death the same way. Like these streets gonna take me out, I ain't a little more ass bitch. You're like, all right, Nana, stop it. Stop it, Nana. You ever talk to anyone over 80 about death? It's just facts. No emotions. <laughs> Closest I've ever came to interviewing a serial killer. <laughs> just sitting there like, Nana, what happened to Rose next door? She's gone. <laughs> she move? You're never gonna find her. <laughs> did, did, did you kill Rose? <laughs> Jen, oh, you sneaky bitch. <laughs> Just so good at this game, man. Uh, 29 sucks. No one tells you it's gonna suck. Like, people in their 30s and 40s complain. And they should. Because <laughs> their lives are almost over. So, yeah. <laughs> so go ahead and die. I need walking room. <laughs> uh, no, you shouldn't. 
you shouldn't applaud. Uh, that's everyone in their 20s like, F you. <laughs> Eat a dick. <laughs> Ah, 29 sucks because 29 is the end of fun without being judged for it. At 29, you and your fun friends stop partying and start having addictions. That's what they call it. <laughs> Can't get drunk on a Monday without raising some eyebrows. <laughs> Bullshit. It's just weird to me that things that in my early 20s that used to make me cool now, make people nervous. <laughs> I used to get drunk before class in college and I was like, this guy is awesome. He's hammered before intro to Roman Lit. That's an 8 a.m. class. <laughs> now, if I get drunk before work, everyone's like, hey. Are you cool? You need to talk? No, I'm still awesome. No, no, you're not. You're almost homeless. That's what you are. I think drinking gets, I know drinking is, if you do it too much, it is a bad thing. But it also, at the same time, is a good thing. I think you understand life better if you get shit-faced all the time. Everyone that clapped will be in a program. And it, <laughs> yeah, programs. Finding God, getting chips. <laughs> I'm just saying, I understand a lot of things better because I'm a hard drinker. Like homelessness. I get it. I get it now. When I was a kid and I saw homeless people, I was just like, why are you outside? <laughs> Go inside. <laughs> but now that I've been a booze bag for 12 years, every time I see a homeless person, I'm just like, oh man. You were probably so much fun 10 years ago. <laughs> Here's a quarter for your Kickstarter. <laughs> Fuck dog shows. That's a necessary thing. The Westminster Kennel Society. It's people in suits, walking dogs. That's what it is. But they trick you by using broadcasters with hushed tones, who, by the way, just oddly sound sexually attracted to the animals. <laughs> so like, up next is, oh, that's... That's a pure golden retriever. Is he trying to fuck that dog? They always bring up the lineage of the animal like it's better than you. Because they know you're watching a dog show. They're like, this is Roscoe, a pure beagle who hails from seven champions. No, he doesn't. I bet none of those dogs fought anybody. Most of those dogs are inbred. Do you know that about show dogs? Yeah, they have to fuck their family like some sort of Game of Thrones plot line. They're blue blood in it. Which humans don't do by, by the way, anymore, we're not doing that. I, but I guess if humans inbreed, it's hillbilly, but dogs do it and it's regal. <laughs> it kind of does sound like I'm arguing for inbreeding. <laughs> like, if you walked into the show right now, you're like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? I'm like, come on, yeah, I want to kiss you guys in. Uh, <laughs> maybe that's what we should do. Maybe we should just do a Westminster hillbilly show. Just have a guy in a suit with a leash, and on the other end is some fat guy in overalls, just sweating, doing simple tasks. Just say, yeah. Obama's a terrorist! And they're like, oh. Is he pure Appalachian? <laughs> I think he's 100% Ozark. Check his genitals. It sucks being single at 29 because it's like, you know, which way do I go? Do I go older or younger? Right? Like I know 18 to 22, I know that's done. I can't fight in that weight class anymore. I, just, I can't compete. 18 to 22 year old girls live different lives. 
they get things for being young and hot. They're like, I want to be on a boat. Then they're on a boat. Like, that shit just happens. It just, just manifests. What's France like? And they live there for three months, rent paid. Very frustrating. I just think I'm at a different stage in my life. I think right now I'd rather just try to bang a 47-year-old mother of three that could tell me what Zeppelin's like live. Like, that's what I want. <laughs> Stories. History. I like older women. You can talk to older women. You can have deep conversations with older women. You can't talk to young girls. They changed language. Up the English language. <laughs> they started abbreviating all of their words. It's a real thing now. <laughs> I heard a girl once go, oh, that's delish. <laughs> Where's the rest of that word? <laughs> you know how confusing that is to be at a bar, having a decent conversation with a girl? And she randomly turns to her friend and she's like, I just got back from vacay. It was totes ab fab. <laughs> what? Did you have a brain injury? Why? Why are you talking like that? If that girl keeps that up 20 years from now, all of her conversations are going to be like, ra ta ha sa So ho. And by the way, that is just me doing Job of the Hut in a bimbo voice. That's all. <laughs> That's all that is. I was a weird kid. I talked to myself a lot. Did other weird shit. I'll admit it to you guys. For two months, when I was eight years old, I thought I was possessed by the devil. <laughs> Thank you for laughing at that. Some audiences just don't react like it's an admission of guilt. They're like, oh, you were the Dark Lord. Okay. <laughs> I watched the exorcism and the omen back to back, left my friend's house, and I was like, I'm probably the devil. <laughs> if I wasn't, why would all those dogs bark at me every time I walk down the alley? <laughs> Here's the shitty part. I wasn't even confident about it. Like, how much does that suck? I imagine if you're the devil, you're like, bow down before me. I was walking around like, everyone's gonna hate me. I don't wanna rule the world with evil. <laughs> I was like an emo devil. That's what I was. I was an emo Satan. I was like, I'm a fallen angel. Couldn't even fucking enjoy it. That summer, my mom sent me to summer camp for the first time, and when you don't have a lot of money and you go to summer camp, it is always church-affiliated, uh, which I didn't know. I just showed up for the first day of camp, saw a bunch of crucifixes, and I was like, they are gonna be so mad <laughs> when they find out the devil is in cabin six. Ironic booking. Honestly, completely forgot that I might or might not be the Dark Lord. Completely, I had such a great time. I made new friends, I ziplined. Uh, I learned how to build a fire. It's pretty important if you're the devil. <laughs> I touched a horse for the first time. Yeah, me and one lady, everyone else. Apparently grew up riding fucking show ponies. So, I didn't know the show in Philly was gonna be all equestrians. The peasant boy touched a horse when he was. <laughs> it even made that horse noise when I touched its face. It was like, <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> that night they were like, all right, everybody, it's dinner time. We're gonna serve Salisbury steak, uh, which it wasn't. <laughs> it was just hamburger patties covered in this mushroom sauce. But I'm dumb, so I was like, oh, Salisbury steak. I wonder how I, how many I can fit into my giant head. I ate probably a good five or six, and then almost immediately after I was done eating, they're like, all right, everybody, time to go outside for a prayer circle, which I had never seen. I wasn't raised religious, so it just looked like a fucked up game of Red Rover. 
But I'm a follower, so I joined in. I also harmonized badass, I found out. <laughs> and what it is, is it was just a bunch of little kids singing to Jesus. And I was having the greatest time of my life, just singing these love songs to the sky. <laughs> About five minutes in, my stomach turned. <laughs> and I started sweating uncontrollably. I had two thoughts at that exact moment. Number one, that wasn't Salisbury steak. <laughs> Number two, if you throw up, everyone will know <laughs> that you're the devil. <laughs> everyone. What would make the devil throw up more than young children singing love songs to Jesus? I'm sitting there fighting as hard as I can at eight years old. She's like, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And then we go to hit a high note where we're like, Jesus! And I just start violently projectile vomiting. <laughs> violently. Gray, colorless matter. You know, like the devil would. <laughs> and I'm not throwing up like a cute eight-year-old. I'm not like, oh, my tum-tum. <laughs> I'm like yelling it out of my face like, ah! Everyone is staring at me. Everyone at camp was staring at me, and all I could hear in my head was, oh, hey, ho, 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 hey, ho, 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 hey, ho, ho, ho. I'm just like, Bleh. I'm not the devil. I'm not the devil, your mother sucks cock in hell. Then I fucking left, I left. The next morning, I went home. You know that weird kid that goes home early? Yeah, that was me. Uh, that kid's the devil, and the devil goes home early. <laughs> My mom picked me up immediately terrified, like, are you okay? I was like, I threw up in front of everybody. <laughs> She's like, it's all right, buddy. Sometimes your stomach just gets hurt. And I was, felt so good. I was like, mom, I think I'm possessed by the devil. <laughs> And in a way that only a very tired single mom could, she just looked at me and said, why would the devil want to possess you? <laughs> oh, yeah, cool. Good point, Trish. Uh, never thought about it like that. I think we just solved one problem and have shattered that into about 700 more. <laughs>